Hey guys, let's talk about the role of fructose and sucrose in sport drinks. We have recently published a new paper titled Fructose and Sucrose Intake Increase Exogenous Carbohydrate Oxidation During Exercise and I'm going to tell you all about it. So during exercise there are two main fuel sources, body fat and carbohydrates. And these carbohydrates can be stored in the body as uh, muscle glycogen in the muscle and as liver glycogen in the liver. However, we can only store a relatively little amount of carbohydrates and therefore these carbohydrate stores are often the limiting factor during prolonged exercise. Luckily, we can also supplement with carbohydrates during exercise and we call this exogenous carbohydrates. So think for example of sport rings of sport bars. And indeed, uh, carbohydrate supplementation improves exercise performance and capacity. However, you cannot simply consume more and more of these products and uh, expect to have more and more energy available. And the reason is, is because the absorption of these carbohydrates becomes limiting. So here on the left you see uh, glucose and it has to be uh, transported uh, uh, in the gut to get into the blood. And this happens by the SGLT1 transporter. However, at a uh, rate of about one gram per minute, this transporter is maxed out. So if you ingest glucose at a higher rate, the glucose will just accumulate in the gut and cause stomach problems. However, there's a second type of sugar called fructose that is transported by the GLUT5 transporter. So a different transporter. So in theory, uh, a combination of uh, these two type of carbohydrates use different pathways to get absorbed and therefore uh, a higher total carbohydrate absorption rate uh, can be expected. And uh, therefore, a combination of these two carbohydrates should also be able to provide more fuel to the muscle during exercise. And interestingly, sucrose, which is uh, just regular table sugar, uh, consists for one part out of glucose and the other part uh, is fructose. And um, sucrose is split into glucose and fructose in the gut. So in theory, sucrose uh, should be an effective carbohydrate source during uh, exercise to uh, achieve high carbohydrate absorption rates and subsequently have uh, a lot of carbohydrates available in the muscle that can be burned as fuel. So we wanted to test this hypothesis and we recruited 10 well-trained cyclists which each performed four exercise tests during which they uh, received sport drinks. During one of the test days they received uh, glucose only as uh, their drink and uh, glucose was ingested at a rate of 1.8 gram glucose per minute. Uh, second test day was with uh, glucose and fructose the same total amount of carbohydrates so again 1.8 gram per minute in total split up in 1.2 gram of glucose and 0.6 gram of fructose and important that 1.2 gram of glucose is uh, still enough to max out uh, the maximal rate of glucose, uh, glucose absorption in the gut which is about one in the third group, a combination of glucose and sucrose was given. So this sucrose uh, splits in glucose and fructose. And if this splitting is not a limiting factor, then uh, this treatment should provide the same total amount of glucose and fructose as the second group. And the fourth group was just a water control group. So here we see uh, the study design on each test day. So the subject cycled for three hours at a constant speed and uh, during this exercise bout they received uh, uh, their sport rings throughout the exercise period. Blood samples were taken, bread samples were taken and a gastrointestinal questionnaire uh, was given uh, throughout the exercise period. So here we see the main outcome, exogenous carbohydrate oxidation rate, which basically means how much gram 
of uh, carbohydrates from your sport rink did you burn? Because that's what you want to know. How much carbohydrates from your sport rink did you burn? Uh, and not how much grams of carbohydrate did you burn in total? Because that will also be partly muscle glycogen. And you would like to spare that as much as possible. So you want your exogenous carbohydrate uh, oxidation rates as high as possible. So your endogenous carbohydrate oxidation rates are as low as possible. And in the white box, you see that the glucose only group uh, receives uh, or achieves a maximal rate of about one gram per minute. And this is nicely in line uh, with uh, the theory that glucose can only be absorbed at a speed of about one gram per minute in the gut. And that is the limiting factor for uh, the rate at which it can be burned in the muscle. However, when uh, uh, glucose plus fructose or glucose plus sucrose was ingested, the total uh, exogenous carbohydrate oxidation rates appeared to be about 45% higher, with no differences between these two groups. So this uh, seems to support the theory that when you have a combination of glucose and fructose, uh, which can be given as free fructose or as fructose in uh, in the shape of sucrose um, that more total carbohydrates can be absorbed and then more can be burned in the muscle but it's a little bit more complex than just that because what happens to fructose after it's absorbed in the gut well it moves to the liver and then the liver can do a few things with it uh, the fructose can be released as fructose into the circulation but this only happens uh, a little bit. When you measure plasma fructose uh, following fructose ingestion, it's actually quite low. The fructose can also be converted to glucose in the liver. And in a fasted state, this happens uh, quite a bit. However, keep in mind that in our study, fructose was co-ingested with large amounts of glucose. And when plasma glucose levels are already very high, your body is not really interested in converting uh, fructose into glucose. So this only happens a little bit. Uh, fructose can also be converted into uh, liver glycogen. And uh, we have done some previous research and this doesn't really seem to happen a lot uh, during exercise. However, after exercise, fructose is very effective at uh, restoring liver glycogen. Uh, a fourth option is that fructose can be uh, used for lipogenesis, which is just a fancy way of saying to synthesize uh, fat. Again, this doesn't happen all that much. And the final option is fructose can be converted into a lactate. Now, lactate has a very bad reputation. It's often blamed for the feeling of fatigue and uh, the burning sensation you feel during high intensity exercise, but that's actually not true. Lactate does not cause fatigue or that burning sensation. Lactate is actually a fuel for muscle. And that's exactly what happened in, in our study. So fructose is absorbed in the gut, transported to the liver. And then the liver converts the majority of fructose into a lactate. The lactate is released into the circulation, moves to the muscle, and then the muscle uh, use lactate for fuel. So lactate is actually a good guy for athletes. So, a few conclusions. Fructose or sucrose co-ingestion increase exogenous carbohydrate oxidation rates compared to the same amount of carbohydrates provided as glucose only. Uh, in addition, fructose or sucrose co-ingestion lowers gastrointestinal complaints compared to the same amount of uh, glucose only. Um, this one is quite logical if you have uh, a mixture of carbohydrates that are absorbed at a higher rate in the gut, less carbohydrates accumulate in the gut and cause uh, gastrointestinal complaints. So I hope you like this video. Uh, I also made a more advanced video where we discuss how are the exogenous carbohydrate rates actually measured in studies like these and uh, how do you actually read the results because the graph I showed you in this uh, video is actually not as straightforward as it might seem. 
So I hope I see you in that video and please like this video and drop a nice comment. And this is also what you see in, uh, in other studies. Um, some, some actual training studies have been done where indeed people have trained for weeks and weeks. And there you typically see that the longer rest period groups uh, built a little bit more muscle.